Okay, so talking about watch mainspring winders and all that happy stuff. So what we have here is the basic setup for doing your mainspring. You asked what kind I use. I use a candy. It's not super old. Um, if I had to guess, it's probably 60s. Uh, it's the usual kind with the pusher like so and the winder like that. And you can de-expand or re-expand to fit whatever size barrel you're going into. Like so. Kaboom. You don't want it to be too tight. You don't want it to be too loose. You just want to have it have enough space that it can just drop in just the way you need it to. Now, I um, I tend to, I have a little mnemonic when it comes to doing these things because I don't really write down notes uh, because of my ADHD and I'm just flat it's a waste of my time. I use mnemonics a lot. So whenever I take a mainspring apart, I always look to see, because you got your teeth, so I always say to myself, teeth up or teeth down. And then if I had the arbor here, it would be square up or square down. That's the side square with the, for the ratchet or the lower arbor part. And then the direction of the mainspring, I call either tsunami or anti-tsunami. Like the, you know, like the tsunami on the back of the Seiko case or the, obviously the piece of art. So in this case, I remember that this, which this, which is, um, this is a Valju 7733 uh, mainspring and barrel. And this was, hang on, square down, teeth up, anti-tsunami. Definitely know it was anti-tsunami. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our diddly. Okay, so you gotta have these these diddlies come with you know come with different uh, darn it. they come with different size bases here. This one I really I tend to pretty much stick with these two. I might have to go bigger because this thing the arbor on these things is a lot lot bigger and does not grab. Yeah, I got it to go. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can do it, huh? Give me, sorry, I'm getting this ready to go. God help me if I can get this done. So basically, the biggest trick with these things is to not use, you gotta hold this in. I hold it in with my palm. It has a pusher button down here and that pushes up this little plate. So it holds this, firmly so it doesn't go anywhere has these grooves here as well lots of knurling because basically you want to make sure you always have a hand on it whenever you're you know moving you never want this thing to get away from you because you know mainsprings so you just keep drawing in normally i do this a lot faster but it doesn't hurt to take time and you're going to see it curl in and you got to make sure about the tsunami, anti-tsunami. And uh, sometimes it gets confusing. You're like, what in the heck way do I put this thing in? It's the side that's up is the direction it's going to be when you drop this in. So I'm letting my tension waver. Again, holding it every single time. Like so. Now this thing has just a little bit of a fold over type bridle because this is obviously a hand winder. No automatics, you do not have to have the slipping bridle. So now what we're gonna do is say crap. Uh, hang on a second. Right. See, I've made a rookie mistake. I let this bridle slip to the outside. So I need to get a firm hand on this and draw it backwards. And angle it straight into the same place. There we go. Then, doing this, 
it's going to want to snap forward, which you'll notice it just did. So we have to do it again. Did you hear that, honey? Yeah. Got to do it again. Yeah. It's true. Hang on. So we're going to just, we're going to just do it live. So I had tightened it holding away from me. I tightened it away from me holding it with my left hand. So if I want to get this out without pulling the mainspring with it, you have to turn it basically the opposite direction. And use, I use an X-Acto knife because I've used these all my life. I'm really comfortable with them. If you choose to use something like this, be aware they're just unbelievably sharp. Anyway, but I use it because it's thin. It goes in here and it keeps the mainspring inside the holder. So then I turn it backwards while pulling outwards. And there we go. Happy mainspring. You'll notice that's still there. Uh, hang on, please. Because I'm going to see if I can recover from my rookie mistake by just doing it live. Let's see if I gave myself enough room where I can drop that tab, that bridle, in here. Oh, look at that. Gosh darn it. Stupid crash bench. Anyway, that's the way you do it. And there is your, damn it, barrel. Good to go. And it is correct anti-tsunami. And uh, I'll be able to put this together, but that's the way you do it. Uh, it doesn't, if you want to be. So for part two, the first one we looked at mainsprings for a hand winder, where the mainspring, the end of it, basically stays attached to the outside of the barrel. It just stays there. It doesn't slip. Now, for an automatic, you have to have, you can't have this thing, it, this, the, there has to be, this thing has to be able to slip. Because otherwise, the auto, an automatic is just going to keep winding and winding and winding. Eventually, you're going to break a mainspring. So this bit, see the little curve on the end there? That is called the slipping bridle. So what this does is it holds to the inside of the barrel. And so when the, when the mainspring is fully wound, it's all tight in the middle, this can slip. Uh, you can do a lot of things with amplitude depending on how this is curved. If things aren't really wet, you know, if you're just getting low numbers, it's possible this might need to be recurved. If you're getting over banking, you can make this curve a little less, so it's gripping a little less strongly. So that's just something to think about. But basically, they're mostly loaded the same way. So we have here our handy dandy old school K and D U mainspring winder. This is the size I pretty much always use. Uh, let me get this on here, and then we'll come back. Okay, so there it is. Now, these K&Ds, they can be adjusted for different size barrels. So you screw this down, and those bits come out. You screw it in. It goes like this. It's not a huge deal. You just want to make sure that you're getting it small enough that you can put it inside the barrel. Okay. So there's our mainspring. We got that loaded. So I haven't dropped this in yet. This is this K and D. These, these uh, what do you want to call them? Slats, fingers, grippy things. You can this screws in and out. And if you so if you go uh, if you if you turn it this way, these get tighter. The other way they get looser. You just want to make sure the mainspring is coiled up enough uh, that it can you can get it into the barrel. Because otherwise, if you haven't done that, well, you're going to have to try to pull this thing out. So it runs basically the same way. The biggest thing about these is to go slow. You don't want to push, because what I'm doing is I'm actually, see this thing? I'm pushing it with my palm there. And you want to keep that just tight, not super tight. You want it not even snug, just enough that it'll, it'll roll in at the right right angle and you're going to get a flat 
flat roll. The only thing that's a trick now with these sliding slipping bridles is you have to actually, holding this very carefully, you take this and you reverse this. Boy, I'm not having fun doing this through my camera. I'm normally right on top of it. Okay, so there that is, see? Come on. Okay, and there we go, we release it. And now, <clears throat> you turn it the opposite. I, I use an X-Acto knife because I'm used to using them. You don't wanna just haul this thing out there because you pull the mainspring out. So I hold this in place holding the mainspring in place. Then I turn the opposite direction of how I was winding it. This pops the little peg out of the, the hole in the intake, and there it is. And that's how you do it.